You um, can just kind of walk us through what we're seeing and... Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, so we're playing um, Atletico Madrid against Barcelona. Um, what's really nice is the stadium that you're looking at right now. And, 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 and the reason for that is this stadium has not been actually used. It's the stadium that they'll be playing in next season. Mm -hmm. So the Calderon um, was, had his last match in the Copa del Rey final. And from next season, they'll be playing in this. So you've got the choreography, perfect, brand new stadium. And here you can start to see the impact of the players. You see the, new, the brand new player models that we've, that we've brought into the game. This is from actually 3D scanning tech, where we've actually fully 3D scanned players. The same that we do with Bolt as well. Yeah, yeah. So they look super authentic. The player faces, the expressions as well. You can see one of the most important things that we've done in terms of the lighting is we took a lot of data from our scanning tours with Barcelona at the Camp Nou and uh, Borussia Dortmund at the Zignal Laguna Park. And we actually stayed there for a few days. We took it daytime. We waited till the evening, turned the floodlights on, captured it again. So we got this authentic night feel. Obviously, it's going to be a little different per stadium, but we're using that real capture data to really improve the lighting and the general look of the game as well. There's a, a quick look at the real player images yeah. coming into the game as well. Cool. Well, let's see. Uh, hopefully, your colleague here takes it easy on me. I hope not. I want to see loads of goals. <laughs> so, what I want you to focus on here as well is just naturally how the game is looking as soon as you start it. Compared to last year, what we've done is we've made the players a little bit smaller and we've panned that camera out a little bit so you get to see more of the pitch. And that viewpoint is a very, very different per stadium as well. Oof. The goalkeepers are fantastic as well. <laughs> what you saw there is the keepers are more aware of where the ball is going. They're safer, they're making more saves and they're pushing it out of danger as well. So what you're gonna see from, from here is a corner kick. One of the main things that the fans asked for was to take away the, the uh, guideline mm. to, to make it much more like a simulation. So here you actually still have the same kind of control where you're sort of holding the crossing button and then from there is the left stick to, to put some curl on it. Oh, wow. fantastic goal. You saw, you saw Torres as well score the header <laughs> yeah. and straight away put his arm out. We've put a lot of emotion into the game. It's alive, he's happy, he scored the goal, he's looking for his teammates. So the goalkeeper go across as well. I feel like this is a setup. <laughs> well played. <laughs> but, what you, but what you saw there in the replay as well is when you're showing the replay, it slows down on those key moments, the key pass leading up to the goal as well. He's not giving you a chance here. Oh, no, no. So here you can see, one thing that I'm hoping everyone can see watching actually is the, is the pace of the game. It's really slow and we've yeah, slowed yeah. it down. It's not like frustratingly slow, but we've slowed it down because again, we get a lot of feedback about keeping it realistic. Yeah, and it feels um, more realistic, right? When it's, yeah, when it's slower. We, we've, we've done that in a few ways. So the first thing I think is just to play away. It's like the dribbling style. Ooh. Tight angle, on, messy, tight angle. On, but and <laughs> I think with that with that dribbling style, what it allows us to do is to, even though the players are heavier, it allows them to to accelerate away with that with that weight because you can wrong foot players who are also heavy as well. I'll give you a chance here in the corner. Anything uh, anything to share in terms of uh, licensing or any new teams that are coming, new leagues or anything? I know you Not have the right Champions now. League, right? Yeah, exactly. Not right now. Yeah, we're still the uh, exclusive license holders of the UEFA Champions League. Um, and I think the main thing at E3 for us to show, which is new, is the stadium that you're playing in. It's the first time anyone's seen it, never mind, you know, in terms of real life as well. No one's actually seen a match in that stadium, so it's great to have it here. Um, in terms of licenses, we tend to always wait until we get closer to launch. We usually use Gamescom show, which is usually at the last week of August to announce all those things. What I can tell the, the viewers right now is that we're gonna add more teams and it's all positive news. Um, I think everyone's gonna be really, really happy, not only with the licenses, but also with some of the legend players that we're working with as well. Yeah, you have, can you talk a little bit about, I know Diego Maradona is coming, you announced that, right? Exactly, yeah, well, I mean, it's no real surprise. We had him, oof, we had him last year, but I think what's, what was really nice about it is that we could reinforce the fact that we are working with legend players and also to sort of give a tease to a lot of people that 
we will be working with the biggest legend players this year and we've got some really really cool announcements as Griezmann oh, hotline bling <laughs> uh, that's great what was really, really nice about that one was the dribbling style of, of uh, uh, Griezmann you'll notice with the dribbling that things feel a lot, really, really really heavy but you have these players like like Griezmann who can dribble fast accelerate touch touch sit the keeper down and a nice little lofted finish as well I mean I mean Asim is making it look really really easy right now <laughs> making you can, it all you like can tell the difference right away when you're controlling someone like Messi or Piquet right like they're yeah, just exactly. so much more versatile and and I quicker. think that's that's great <laughs> and I think that's in the DNA of of Pez I mean I did some presentations today and I told people about the massive changes that we're making to Pez. Oh, this is a new three year cycle. And a lot of the people who really like Pez 17 got, got, got really scared. They were like frightened, but I think one of the most important things is, is Pez is Pez. And you know what kind of makes Pez, which is that responsiveness, that individuality, that attention to detail with how players feel and how teams play as well. As long as we keep that in the game, keeping it instinctive, responsive, and how you're playing it, it's not predetermined, so you're not doing button presses to do crazy things. It's all happening naturally. I think no matter what we do with the game, it, it will always stay as Pez. So even now when you're using the left stick, if you, if you sort of move it fast, you'll notice the player shimmying and turning without touching the ball. It's not a button press to do that or, or to hold it. It just happens naturally, again, based on skill. Someone like Neymar will do more exaggerated shimmies and turns. We've got this new auto protect feature as well, where the players sort of block block the players, so you can control the pace more. So when you're when you're dribbling, you'll you'll sense players coming, and you'll block them off, um, which is really important to dictate the pace of the game. Um, again, making it slower, keeping it uh, realistic as well. What about for the uh, defenders? You know, those who like to uh, play on the back. Yeah, it's and not it's a case of like holding X and rushing in. You have to be a lot more careful. Certainly, I think what's really nice to see is, is the different styles of play. Here, as you attack Atletico Madrid, you can see the very deep defensive line. You've got the midfielders very, very, very close to their central defenders as well. And I think when you, when you see, as you guys are you know, playing as Barcelona, when you see they get the counter-attack, Barca are starting their, their, their back line so, so close to the halfway line that you can counter them a lot which is obviously kind of playing into the, into the hands of uh, Atletico. Nice Are there players. any uh, big differences between the uh, PS4, Xbox One and the uh, PS3 and 360 uh, versions? I think in terms of some of the features, yes. In terms of the gameplay feel, it's very similar actually. Naturally, we can never do this, these kind of visuals. Some of the animation fluidity won't be there, but that but that sense of playing Pez, that, that feeling of uh, playing Pez is, is there. We're really sort of proud still. We have so many fans still on the PS3 especially, um, and they're still playing it. Ooh, nice. So we, we still want to support the machine, but obviously as each year goes, goes by, we are seeing a ton of fans who used to play on those machines. I, th I think that's also important for, you know, people. a lot of people in developing countries only have access to like a PS3 or, that's a, an or a 360. Point. That's an excellent point. And it's something that we do have to look after, actually, uh, with, with some of our fans um, who don't want to go out and buy a new console yet. Um, as you know, they are getting cheaper, but they keep bringing out newer versions as they did, at, as they announced here, which is really expensive. So I think as long as the base version to upgrade, gets lower and lower and that step into the I guess the new gen market or current gen market becomes more affordable I think you'll see fans moving across more and more to the current gen consoles all right so before we go can you remind us when uh, the game is gonna be hitting stores September 12th right perfect yeah, yeah. yeah. that's in the US a few days later uh, worldwide great so stay tuned to ngadget.com you can read all about